magician places the red aces into different parts of the deck. A selected playing card, the nine of clubs, is placed in the deck face up. The deck is spread and the red aces are pushed into the deck. The magician then reveals that the red aces are now on either side of the nine of clubs. The magician then loses the nine of clubs back into the deck. He takes the red aces and throws them into the deck. The red aces are now seen to have a playing card in between them. This is the nine of clubs. The nine of clubs is taken and lost into the deck one more time. The red aces are placed on top of the box and the deck is thrown beneath the aces. A playing card appears between the red aces. This is once again the nine of clubs. I am Daniel Madison. This is Cameo. I am Daniel Madison, welcome back and thanks for being here Charlie Madison and I have a dope video for you today that I've been wanting to produce and make and share with you for the longest time This is Cameo, or at least it's part one of Cameo What is Cameo, Daniel Madison? Thanks for asking Charlie, allow me to explain In the first book that I ever published many many years ago There was a trick in there, a routine called Cameo And it's a series of sandwich effects Where a selected playing card keeps reappearing between a pair of two red aces Over the years I kept adding to this Cameo idea The reason why I call it Cameo is because I always saw the sandwich effect of kind of a Cameo Every magician's got a little Cameo of a sandwich effect They just turn up and then they go Way. But there's such beautiful tricks that I kept going back and over the years I kept bringing more ideas to the cameo routine to the point where cameo the, the cameo the, to the point where the cameo routine is now more of a collection a huge collection of sandwich effects in this video cameo part one I'm going to dedicate my time to teaching you phase one two and three of cameo part one so three different ideas now my goal my aim with sharing cameo and all the things within it is that you take these tricks apart because there's going to be so many little slights and nuances hidden within these routines that you can take a piece from here a piece from here and you can take them and put them into something else and make them something completely different that's just for you this is just me sharing with you some ideas that i think complement or are complementary to the sandwich effect without further ado get yourself a deck of playing cards i'm daniel madison and this is cameo part one to explain and teach cameo throughout these videos we're going to be using the red aces with the nine of club as the selection of course to begin this trick we need to have a very specific set up we need to have a single playing card on top of each of the red aces on top of the deck and that simply looks like this i have an ace with a king behind it ace with a queen behind it these are on top of the deck all together like this and before I even start, I'm going to get ready for the turnover because I want to turn all these cards over but I only want to display the two red aces. So I'm going to lift four playing cards. So I've got a pinky break under the top four playing cards. Now I'm going to do another count to separate those two by two. So now if I lift these up, I have the ace there and the ace there. It makes it easier for when I'm going to display these. But what I do at this point, I'm going to pull back with the bottom two playing cards and push back forward with the top two. Now, this puts me in a position where I have an ace here with a card on top of it and these two cards can just relax on top. So in this position, I'm now ready to go. I turn over at this card or these two cards, this is a double, very carefully like this. This allows me to be in this position where I can now grab these two playing cards here and display two red aces just like this. When it's in this position, I'm going to lift these two playing cards up 
and I'm going to hold them in a tilt kind of position because now we're going to execute the turnover move or what might be called the improved turnover move. I've given it loads of different names over the years. Uh, it basically looks like this. I'm going to use finger one and two on top of these two cards on the on the inside top corner. My thumb's going to go underneath on the back and as I'm turning these face down I'm going to be pushing with fingers one and two the ace underneath the deck. The fingers of the deck underneath are going to help by pulling that card underneath. So in very slow motion and then I put the card inside like so. So this isn't a move that's rushed, you don't really go through it fast, you can do it quite slowly because the moment of deception where you're pulling the ace under the deck is hidden by the rock card, by the, king of, uh, by the king of spades in this case. So I can go really slowly, turn that card, pull the ace underneath, and now when I'm in this position, so you're looking down, which as you should be when I turn the ace of diamonds down like this, you now think you're looking at the back of the ace of diamonds. I'm gonna lead Susan's eyes away from the, the deception as it happens by taking that king and making a big kind of round action to put it into the middle, which kind of looks like this. So I come forward and then I come back into the deck like this, the big action hid the small action. Now I'm in a position where this looks like the first ace is in the middle of the deck or towards the bottom of the deck, that's important actually. Make sure it goes in towards the bottom of the deck. As I'm putting this into the bottom of the deck, I'm doing a pinky count over here, just the top two playing cards, so, so I know that I can get those two playing cards now. Now all I do, turn those face down, take the top card, it looks like I'm taking the next ace, actually I've got a queen, I put it towards the top, like so, I now spread the deck, like this, this does a few things, first of all, and mainly, it displays that those two aces are in different parts of the deck, but at this point I'm asking Susan to please touch any card in the middle of the deck. This is a very important moment, we will use the nine of clubs, they're gonna go for somewhere in between those two red aces, obviously that's the instruction. Let's say they touch this card here. I'm gonna take every card from above it here. I'm gonna put it down on the surface so that I can free up my hand to take this playing card. Really, I'm just positioning the deck so that so the, the trick works because now we have a red ace right here. So this is gonna be the nine. I'm gonna turn the nine face up to show it. I'm gonna straight away put it on top of the red ace here, and then I'm gonna take the rest of the deck and put it on top here. Instantly, without missing a beat, I'm gonna spread those playing cards to display the situation. Now you can see, it looks like we have two red aces here with the nine exactly where our participant Susan Sausage selected it. Actually, we've reversed the top and the bottom packets, which puts the red aces here, which allows us to very easily execute and perform the first part of this trick. If you have your participant come along and push those aces into the deck, what they believe to be aces, as they are doing this, I'll be already going in here and then separating like this. Now, I don't want to push these two halves away too far. I just want to leave a gap like this so that I can very simply, very easily turn over those playing cards like this to reveal the nine of clubs between the two red aces. That is the first phase of Cameo Part 1. Phase 2 of Cameo Part 1. There's a very sneaky moment coming up where we're going to switch a playing card or we're going to make our participant believe that we're giving them the nine of clubs to mix into the deck themselves. This is something that's similar to something that I called style sandwich that I've taught. I think it was in the sausage sandwich video in one of my previous videos. But I'm going to show you a development, a different idea of the same concept where we're gonna switch the nine of clubs. So when I'm picking these up very kind of casually, just pick them up, put them here, and then collect. As I'm doing this, I'm stealing the top playing card underneath the bottom red ace. So I'm gonna take an extra playing card. So I square up and keep hold of these. It looks like I've just picked up the three playing cards, but I've stolen a playing card. And there's not much of a technique to this, there's not much of a method other than this helps. The spread playing cards helps because when I pick these up, I can keep my thumb on top of it. I put these here. All I, all I have to do is keep it separate from the deck, square up, take these. Now I have, it looks like I've just taken the three cards, put these here. I can now show, if I spread with my thumb, I can show the top, the nine like this, keeping control of a hidden playing card 
which is two of clubs in our case, underneath the bomb playing card. I can show the knight here. Now I can instruct Susan to collect the playing cards or to take this pile and put it on top of this. This is very important because I'm gonna show her the nine. I'm gonna say, so Susan, please take those playing cards and put them back on top of here. So as she's collecting these, look how spread they are. They're not easy to pick up. She has to do, to do a job now. This is my forced distraction. Now I can come back with the nine, square up, and then I'm just gonna pull away the bottom blind card like this. Um, it shouldn't work, but it does, and it's a beautiful thing. By the time she's collected these playing cards, as she's about to put them on top, I say we'll put the nine inside, and I time this at a moment where she's she knows what her instruction is. I've already told her to put this packet on top of here. So as she's doing it, I take advantage of the timing by pretending this is the nine release of two and put it inside as she's doing it and saying, we'll lose the nine inside. Now she's not gonna stop and go, hold on a second. I'll just put these back and I'll just check what card you put in there. Because she's seen the nine of clubs. She now sees me with two red aces, which I can freely spread. Meanwhile, hiding the real nine in here, the actual nine. So she's gonna lose this card in the middle. What's beautiful about this, if I put this like this, off center when she puts the playing cards down like this, we can still see it. It's a further convincer we believe that the nine of clubs is now in the middle of the deck. Meanwhile, I'm already set up because I've got my two red aces with the nine of clubs hidden between it. So all I have to do is keep hold of these carefully. I do like when I'm doing sandwich effects to put those playing cards down and come back to them. It frees up my hands. It makes it look like I'm innocent and I'm not up to the devil's business. At this position, when this card is sticking out, I can now ask Susan to do more things. The more your participant and your audience can touch the apparatus, the playing cards, the more that they can touch them and make contact with them, the more real the magic is gonna feel, no question. So we're gonna ask Susan to come in and push that card inside like this. If you can trust your participant to spread, to rub and spread those playing cards across the table, I can't trust Susan to do that because she's got sausage grease all over her fingers, as do many participants. So there's no, there's no problem with you spreading the deck yourself. In fact, in most cases, I want to spread the deck myself for this next phase because we are now gonna take these three playing cards, posed as two playing cards, and I'm gonna throw them like a frisbee <laughs> I'm going to throw them like Nick Frisbee, uh, my lines, into the deck itself and I'm going to throw them at an angle where it's going to hit downwards so that these three playing cards are leaving the deck no choice but to let me in. When you throw this downwards, it forces its way under one of those playing cards, under one of them. it has to, it can't not. Try it, please try it. Obviously you'll try it, you wouldn't be watching this video otherwise, but before you do that, one thing that I, I found myself doing with a lack of confidence when it comes to spreading that deck is quickly coming over here and then pressing down and really bending that deck, beveling that deck like this, so that now when I spread, all those playing cards are pointing upwards. Look at the gaps in that, and they're all pointing to the ceiling, so the gaps you can't miss at this point. Let me reiterate, you don't need to do this, but it certainly helps. So at this point, I'm gonna take my red aces, careful to hide the man of clubs obviously I don't want to show that so I'm going to keep a solid grip and just slowly peel out the bomb ace I'm going to stand back here a little bit and then I'm going to very slowly come over here and then very quickly whip those aces into the deck you'll find in most cases that they spin a little bit out of the deck like this and it looks beautiful it looks like they went in and spun that playing card out. If they get stuck in the middle, it still looks as beautiful. No matter how these land and no matter how they spin away from the deck, they're going to reveal that nine of clubs between them. They have to because of the aggression that you're throwing them at. They're going to separate. Even that, they went into the deck. We all saw it going to the deck and then they came out the other side and they took a playing card with them. It doesn't really matter at this point if they're sandwiched or not because you were still able to pull the selected playing card out of the deck with the red aces. That is the end of phase two. On to phase three of cameo part one. So at this point, we're in a similar position as we were just a moment ago. We have a spread deck, we have the nine, we have the two red aces, and we need to switch the nine of the club for a rock playing card that Susan Sausage is gonna believe is the nine when she loses it into the deck. 
Yes, by all means, do the exact same thing that you did, but allow me at this point to show you what style sandwich actually is because I think it's a beautiful way to switch that playing card without anybody knowing. You do need to give Susan a job for the moment so that she's not eyeballing the hell out of what you're doing with the playing card. The deck is ribbon spread at the minute and we're gonna do this, the same thing. We can display the nine a few times uh, between the red aces. We're gonna keep it in between the red aces uh, right up until the switch because we want Susan to keep seeing it. I'm gonna show her a few times. I'm gonna put the three cards on top of the deck here. Again, ribbon spread. And I'm gonna collect everything and do the same thing. With my thumb, I'm gonna push off an extra playing card. And I'm now picking up four playing cards, not just the aces. So now I'm gonna put the deck down like this again. And I'm gonna spread off the top two playing cards. I like doing this thing. I don't think I've ever mentioned this. I like doing this thing where you almost do um, an exposed second deal to get that nine out. Because right now I'm holding four playing cards between figure two and the, is that called the clunge and the clunge of my hand so if I were to handle these freely you could see four playing cards but I'm controlling them so now I push the top card over so that you can see the sandwiched card now not to repeat that same step I use my free hand my thumb to take that playing card out like this this reveals the two red cards and it then shows the nine between meanwhile my clunge of my finger I still keep in the two of spades Hidden behind the Ace of Heart. Um, I use that a lot, but I've never really mentioned it before because it's such a simple non moment. But uh, this allows me to set up for the next uh, for the next slide, which is going to be style sandwich. So I'm going to push this off, take the nine out, but I'm, I'm going to take two. Uh, Charlie, please send help. I'm going to take both playing cards like this and it's just a nice little gesture, a nice little moment where you use these two playing cards to direct Susan to do something. So I'm going to take these two and face up so that I can point with the nine or with my fingers. It looks like I'm pointing. I'm going to say, Susan, lift the deck up about halfway. So as she's reaching in to lift the deck up, I'm going to come back here. Now there's two ways of doing this. I can take these two playing cards and go straight underneath like this so that now when I spread it still looks like I've got the nine there but I've successfully done the switch that's probably the fastest way to do it another way of doing this is once I've pointed and once you do that I put it back on top but I hold it in kind of a tilt position now I'm going to do a Charlier cut and square up again push the top card over and then take this out and looks like nine when really we switched it it depends on your situation it depends how fast you want to do it it depends on what you can get away with i guess but i would highly advise that you do the first version so from start to finish we're gonna say susan lift the deck up about halfway these are gonna go underneath the deck like this and then i'm just gonna allow the top two cards to spread as she lifts up i'm gonna put the deck the, the playing card inside the deck I'm gonna put this down here, and then I take the top red ace, the top ace of heart in this case, put it underneath, so the nine of clubs is now sandwiched once again. Whew, that was a long sentence. From this position, I have to take the deck away now because I'm gonna use it to throw against the box. So I don't want the aces to go anywhere near the deck. If they go near the deck, then our participant, when they backtrack, when they think about how this could be done, they would have said, ah, that's when it happened. So we don't want this deck, this, we don't wanna use this hand, the same hand to handle the deck. So I have the aces here. I'm gonna move the deck to the side where I need it because we're gonna be throwing it from this side. I'm gonna take the box and put it here. And and then put the two red aces on top ever so carefully. Please don't be as careful as I was just then. There's no need to be that careful. When you're careful like that with a sandwich effect, you're kind of giving away the secret. You're letting people know that you're hiding something. If you can handle them, the cards freely just like this, just by throwing them or handing off or letting them drop and just trusting that those cards are gonna to stick together, take more risks, you'll learn so many more things. From this position, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take the deck. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna buy myself a little moment just to build up a tiny bit of anticipation by taking the cards and riffling through them like this. And I look down into the riffle itself. I'm looking into there like this, making it look like I'm looking for the position of the Knight of Club as if it's got something to do with it. Charlie, it's got nothing whatsoever to do with you or the trick. So I do this, looks like I'm looking for the Knight. And I hold the deck like this on the edges and I'm gonna step back here, make sure my face is still in focus on the camera. <laughs> and then from this position, 
I'm just gonna whip those playing cards underneath the box, but I want them to land about here. So when they land here, that's when the spread's gonna happen. The cards spreading themselves, that is the action that's gonna kick the box out of the way and cause those aces to separate from the nine, just like this. So if you look how the cards landed, they landed completely different to how they were sat on top of the box. On top of the box they were clearly, or they should have, back in focus Charlie, they should have been, it should have been clear that there was nothing between them because you separated them and looked like two playing cards and then all that happened is they dropped from the box to the deck and there's over some the card between them. Um, what a beautifully magical moment. This video could be such a long video because the, the cameo series is such a vast and huge and massive thing. So I'm going to come back in a separate video to teach you the second part, cameo two. But as for now, this was cameo phase one, two, and three of part one. That was cameo part one. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back soon with cameo part two with some more phases, with some more cameo sandwich ideas. I'm going to repeat something that I said right at the beginning of this video. Don't do sandwich effect after sandwich effect after sandwich effect for the same participant because they're going to catch on. They're going to see what's coming next and it's going to make them stop looking at the aces and start looking at different parts. Maybe the deck, maybe this hand, maybe this hand that just so happens to be hiding something. Variety is the spice of life, Charlie. So take these sandwich effects apart, use them one by one, mix them in with your routine, do what you want with them. You might be an idea that you find in these videos that you can take and go, Oh, I have my own idea with that and that's all I hope. Make sure you subscribe so you get the notification bell going ding, ding, ding when Cameo Part 2 drops, which will be very, very soon. I'm Daniel Madison, that was Cameo Part 1. Thanks for watching, see you next time.